Hey guys, got Lenny Hayes here, legend of the St Kilda Football Club, in the latest episode of Trading Tales brought to you by CMC Markets. Well Len, thanks for coming down and, and having a chat with me down here at Hyde Park. How did you get into Aussie rules, obviously being from a non-AFL sort of part of Australia, um, how did you find the sport? Uh, yeah, it's a good question, Steely. Um, through my dad, uh, he was a Victorian, so he met mum overseas, uh, settled in Sydney. Uh, he was a big North Melbourne fan, so he's the one that probably uh, pushed me in that in that direction. Playing rugby in the schoolyard definitely helped my physicality and tackling. Would you say the same? Yeah, I think so, mate. Yeah, definitely. Like, I don't know about you, but there was not many guys who played AFL at school. Or were you similar? Yeah, there was only three or four in my in my grade that played Aussie rules and the rest were, were playing rugby. So I feel like it, maybe it wasn't from me learning how to tackle, playing the schoolyard. It was generally that everyone else that played Aussie rules had some sort of rugby influence as well. So um, I feel like the physicality in footy in Canberra is big as well. So that definitely um, helped me develop in that space too. So. Oh, definitely. No, same at my school. There's two other guys. You know, every, every lunchtime was touch rugby. So... Yeah. People sort of ask about, you know, I was quite good at a sidestep and, you know, that was probably because I was pretty slow, but I reckon also just from playing touch rugby in the schoolyard yeah. and definitely the tackling. Although I, di I did get dropped um, in my first year um, by Tim Watson and and I, I don't think I, I was probably showing the tackling side of enough. So it definitely took a little bit of time, but I think just having that technique and being a bit more used to it yeah. just gave us an advantage and definitely see that in your game too. You joined the club in 1999. What were the early years like for you? Um, yeah, I, I got drafted um, at the end of 98, so yeah, 99 was my first year and uh, it was really good experience, you know, guys like Robert Harvey, Nathan Burke, Stuart Lowe, all at the club. I didn't know a lot about St Kilda, I was a Swans fan, so to get down there and then you get entrenched in the club and, you know, you play a few games and um, it was awesome. We, we didn't win many games back then, we actually struggled a fair bit. I think the first two or three years um, we finished sort of near the bottom of the ladder which meant we got good draft picks but just playing AFL footy which was a dream from you know, a young kid was, was just awesome. I suppose you just spoke about a few of the players that you did play with, Berkey, Harves, Rui, who were your favourite players to play with and why? Um, yeah, I was pretty lucky mate, we played some pretty good teams, uh, but you mentioned a few there, like I think, you know, when I first got to the club, I'll, I'll never forget Stewie Lowe sort of said, if you want to watch someone train and you want to emulate someone, just go and watch halves, and I had, actually had my, his poster on my wall uh, growing up, just because I didn't barrack for the Saints, but he was the elite midfielder in the competition, so to be able to, you know, play alongside him for a number of years um, was just awesome, and then yeah, guys like Rui, um, you know, it was just he was just a superstar. Uh, probably a bit like you with, you know, Maxi King. You just sort of put it in any sort of vicinity of them and they sort of make you look good. So, and then, you know, guys that I got drafted with, you know, um, Stevie Milne, Stevie Baker, Troy Schwartz. There were just so many, you know, good players. Um, pretty lucky to play at the Saints in the era that I did because we played in some good teams and big games. Yeah, yeah you would have played with quite a few good players. It was a great era to be a part of the Saints, I reckon. Going back the other way, Lenny, you played against some pretty incredible players as well. Nathan Buckley, Chris Judge, just to name a few. Who were the tough ones to match up on? Yeah, I think when we first, or when I first started at the club, um, Brisbane Lions, that team that won three in a row, they were sort of flying and um, we were a bit of an up and coming team at that time. So guys like Simon Black and Michael Voss, uh, Nigel Lappin, they were you know, really tough players. And then so I guess later in my career, we had a, a great rivalry with Geelong. So, you know, Gary Ablett Jr. was just a freak and not that I played on him too much, he usually got tagged, but um, him and Jimmy Bartell and you know, guys like that. Um, so yeah, lucky to play in, in an era where so many great players you know, were still going around. Who, who do you reckon? Matt Fife's one that I've always found, I've, I've, I've played a lot on Matt Fife and I found him very hard to play on at times just because he's so big and versatile and can take you forward and same with Paddy Cripps and, and Dustin Martin and those blokes as well, they're always pretty tough matchups. so yeah. um, I've had the privilege of tagging them and sort of going 120 minutes with them so um, they've definitely taught me a lot as a, as a midfielder but I've really enjoyed it so. Yeah. So have you taken parts of their game into your game because you did have to tag for a couple of years when you first started but now you're obviously one of the best mids in the competition was that part of your development? Yeah I definitely think it was a bit of an apprenticeship for me. Yeah. Um, I suppose some people probably say that Richo um, you know left me left me out to dry at times and probably didn't um, didn't help me in terms of my development, but I feel like it was something that I needed as a midfielder to to get me going a bit. So 
yeah, I was able to sort of take bits and pieces from different midfielders and um, try and learn a bit from the best in the competition. So, yeah, I found it very useful that sort of period. Yeah. Lenny, you first became the captain in 2004. What was it like taking on the captaincy at just 24 and talk us through the rotating captaincy? Um, yeah, it was. It was probably something that Grant Thomas brought in at the time. We were, you know, we had a couple of older players, you know, Robert Harvey and Nathan Burke were coming, well, we thought Haas was coming towards the end, but he had another 10 years. But I think it was one of Tomo's brainchilds just to probably bring on and fast track the leadership. So yeah, I was lucky enough to, to do it for 12 months at 24. I'm, I must admit, mate, I, I probably felt a bit out of my depth to start with and probably took a bit of convincing. Um, you know, I was probably a leader who probably led more through their actions, which, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, perhaps you're a bit like that as well. And so it was, it was sometimes harder for me to, you know, I had to work on it to be able to come out of my shell a little bit more and be that vocal leader that we needed midweek as well. Game day was sort of fine, but um, yeah, I had to work a lot on that. And I, th I think I developed probably tenfold uh, you know, throughout that 12 months. And then the year after, Nick Rewalt did it and Luke Ball had a go at it as well. And I think that actually helped us develop as a group. It was pretty controversial back then. Um, well, I just had a chat to Rats, and I think they're bringing it in next year, so I don't know who's going to take over you, mate. Yeah, but... <laughs> it'd be nice to share the load a little bit. But how have you found it? Like, it's Because uh, I, I tend to think that we're quite similar in a lot of ways. Um, I'm probably a little bit worse looking, but, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like you obviously lead by your actions. That's pretty clear to see on, on game day, but how, how have you found the role? Yeah, probably similar to yourself, Len. I probably found it very challenging early and probably did need to get convinced um, you know, by gears and, and rats and the like to, to get me going and wrap my head around the whole captaincy, but um, had a lot of support from the very start from, from, from the rest of the players and, and the boys who voted me in. So, um, yeah, still sort of learning as I go and definitely need to keep developing that, that vocal side of things. But, um, yeah, the, the, the game day stuff definitely comes natural, similar to yourself. So. Definitely getting there, but yeah, I've still got a long way to go, I think, in terms of my leadership. Oh, you're doing well. Just from, I mean, just from an outsider's point of view, I think, I'm not saying it just because you're sitting here, but the way you've played the last couple of years and the way you've led, like, it's been a big part of why the club's doing well, so keep it up. Mate. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks. Lenny Hayes tries to keep it. Oh. Glenn Archer's hit on you back in the day. Is you know We'll go down in footy folklore. Do you want to talk us through that? It was my first game. Um, I got selected... I think it was about round five in my first year and the game, funnily enough, was in Sydney. So it was sort of set up beautifully. I don't know where the club did it so they didn't have to fly my family down and maybe cut costs, but I had a heap of people at the, at the ground and, um, you know, that was, yeah, it was, I think it was the last quarter. It was a pretty tight game. I'm just sort of paddling the ball along the boundary line and then all of a sudden just whack. He just got me an absolute beauty up the middle. Lenny Hayes tries to keep it. Oh. Down goes Lenny Hayes but he picks himself up. He's a tough cookie, this youngster. See what the bloke that uh, fouled him is also, Glenn Archer. My friends still talk about it to this day, and I think, like, you know, when, when guys retire, they do, like, a top five plays of your career, and I think I'm the only guy that's ever had a top five. One of their highlights is actually getting cleaned up, but it was sort of one of those moments that you get remembered for. Um, he certainly got me uh, right up the middle. I think I got a free kick, but Stony bloody dragged me off the ground, so I didn't get to take it. But um, and we, we ended up losing that game. So, right. but it is one of those moments that you know when you do look back, it's yeah, it's almost a welcome to the AFL yeah. type moment. Yeah, definitely. From memory, he got up pretty quickly. That was that's that's why it's got so much attention. And don't think it was the initial hit, but it was just a, the first game that got up and got back on with things. So it was pretty impressive to see. But, yeah. no, I appreciate that, man. Awesome clip. Did you have a mantra or something you live by as a player to sort of motivate you and get you going? In my first couple of years at the club, I, I probably struggled to find consistency and I was sort of, you know, I was playing a little bit of half forward. There's more experienced, better midfielders at the club at that time. And I was sort of in and out of games. And I remember Grant Thomas, you know, said to me, I was injured, I was out with a shoulder. And he said, you know, you're going to have a good year next year. And um, my, my sort of mantra just became just giving you absolute you know, greatest effort every time you went out to train and play. And that sort of just flowed into games. So it was that 100% effort, 100% of the time um, type player. I knew that I probably wasn't the, you know, most skilled going around. So that was sort of something that, you know, I was generally pretty fit and worked hard on my fitness that, yeah, every time I was out there, I wanted to win. And, and that's sort of what I live by, I guess. Mm. What about you? Do you, what, what do you go by? Do you have like a personal sort of trademark or anything that you, no, I wouldn't say I do. Yeah, no. I just um, 
some of yourself. I'm just a competitive person naturally, I feel. So every time I do something, I do it, you know, pretty flat out. So yeah, I've always trained pretty hard and I feel that's, that's really translated into my game, so. Well, he's a man for a big occasion, we know that, but can he get the distance? He's pumped it hard, he's pumped it long, he's yeah. kicked the goal, Lenny Hayes! You really put your team on your back in the 2010 Grand Final. What are your reflections on the game and what was the week like after? Yeah, it was a strange week, mate. Like, obviously playing in, I think, only his second draw in history. Um, so, yeah, it was quite strange. I mean, at halftime in that game, uh, the first Grand Final, I think we were four goals down and um, we weren't, we knew that Collingwood were playing much better than us, but didn't put us away. They kept kicking points. So we just knew that if we could sort of grind away, and it's sort of how we played all year, that we could get back into it and just felt like if we had another couple of minutes that we, we might have got them, um, but it wasn't to be. And then, yeah, the next week, very surreal. It was just, it, um, yeah, I mean, some people say that maybe the Magpies handled it a little bit better. It was one of those things that's just such an unknown. Um, unfortunately, we probably spent all our tickets in that first week, so. Yeah, I mean, the grand finals that we played in were, you know, some of the, your best memories um, and, you know, the build up and seeing all the fans get around you and um, up and about. Um, but then, you know, to also not get it done, it's got sort of those feelings of, um, you know, just a missed opportunity, and I guess a bit of sadness, really, because it would have been great for all of uh, my teammates and all the fans as well. Um, but yeah, it wasn't to be, mate. But um, I mean, I don't know how, how you guys feeling about this season and, and what you guys can achieve because you know you played finals a couple of years ago and got a bit of a taste of it yeah yeah i definitely feel like we've got a lot of belief in the group um you know with the, with the start of the year we, that we've had um we definitely have a pretty tough road home so we're trying to take it week by week and we know it's going to be pretty tough to get there but um yeah i think things have things have turned from last year to this year and um you know what the group thinks is what the group thinks we're capable of so um yeah we think it's possible but yeah, we, we still need to put a lot of hard work into it and, um, and do our best to, to get the finals and then we'll go from there. But yeah, I suppose my reflections on that period and the footage that I've seen of the 2010 Grand Final, like the fans down at Moorabbin at Captain's Run, um, that's one thing that stood out to me was, was how cool the experience would have been as a player. So my fingers crossed that this group gets there pretty soon, but um, or at least once in, in my career and our career. But um, It'd be pretty cool for us to get there soon. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, like, as a past player, like, we're all sort of riding that with you guys and have a lot of belief in what you guys are doing and what rats is the system and the way you're playing. And so anything's possible, mate. Throughout your career, but particularly when you retired, you got a lot of love from your teammates and the Saints faithful. How well received did you feel like you were from the Saints people across your, across your career? It was quite embarrassing, to be honest, mate, the way, and if I had my time again, I probably wouldn't have announced it in season. I just thought, you know, I kept getting asked um, from journalists, you know, and I guess even teammates, like, you're gonna play next year. And I thought, bugger this, I'm just gonna say it now and get it over with. And it sort of created a bit of, and I think the boys were sort of taking the piss with it a bit and knew that I hated it. So it just made it even worse. Um, but no, the, the Saints and mate, you know, like they, they love you and the Saints faithful. I think what they love is they love players that, you know, try their best. It doesn't, you don't necessarily always have to win, but if you're giving great effort, then they can, you know, they can relate to that um, because they've been through a lot of hard times. So they were great to me, great to my family. And um, yeah, still, you know, when I do bump into Saints fans and they come up and say hello, more than happy to have a chat with them. And I think they're some of the best supporters in the world. You spent some time coaching uh, at the Giants. Um, now you're taking a little bit of a break. Do you see yourself getting back into footy anytime soon? Um, oh, I, I'm not too sure, mate. I, I do miss you know parts of coaching, definitely. Like you know being involved in the cut and thrust of it and sort of working towards that common goal, dealing with guys like yourself. Although you did break my heart, you know, about six years ago at a cafe in in, in Sydney when you told me that you were going to leave the Giants. Um, I did tell you where I was going though. You did, which made it a little bit easier to take. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I do, I do miss parts of it. But the other side of it is that, um, you know, I've got a little bit more time for my family. I've got two young boys who have started playing sport now and just been able to be a little bit more involved with them has been, been great. And yeah, we've moved. Um, out sort of near the Blue Mountains, a couple of hours away, and got a little farm out there. And yeah, it's been been great, good good experience. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things that you, you sort of never say never. I still love footy and still doing a little bit of stuff with Triple M, so I get to watch. But yeah, so uh, footy's been a big part of my life, and I think it always will. Um, 
yeah, but it's been nice to also take a little break too, mate. Uh, what advice would you have for me and the rest of my career, Lenny? Oh, mate, I think you're, you're going about it the right way. I don't think you need too much advice from me, but I just um, keep encouraging you to, to lead from the front. Um, I think you're doing a great job, you know, and as I said before, I think you and I are quite similar in a lot of ways. So, you know, you would have the utmost respect from everyone at the footy club. Keep driving them hard. Um, you know, I think you, you're well set up for life after footy and whatever you do. You know, good Canberra boy, breed them tough tough there so um yeah just keep doing what you're doing mate appreciate it mate good work thanks. well lenny thanks for coming down and having a chat with me really appreciate it no, good to catch up steely thanks good man cheers mate